We're at the Houston downtown YMCA in Houston, Texas for the 1989 championships, the United States National Singles Racquetball Championships. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Lucas along with Steve Strandamo, noted racquetball coach and racquetball expert. He'll be joining me alongside as we describe both the women's singles and the men's singles championships in the open division. And Steve, uh, it's been yet another big year here, 1989, with uh, some of the top names. And we're going to see some of the top names in these championships we're talking about. As an example, in the women's singles, which we'll be taking a look at first, Cindy Doyle will be going against Michelle Gilman. Cindy Doyle is an up-and-comer. Cindy's an excellent player. She looked really good yesterday against Tony Bevlock in the semifinals. Very strong, very aggressive. Looks like she has a real want and, and desire to compete and, and win this championship this year. Both of these competitors, we must add, know each other very well, as a matter of fact, because uh, Michelle Gilman and, uh, and Cindy are doubles partners. But they know each other, and yet at the same token, uh, Cindy maybe doesn't know her well enough. Well, Michelle, they've had a lot of uh, battles in the past. I think they've played five or six times, and Michelle has won every, every one of those games. Last year, she was a little nervous, I think, playing in the finals against Tony Bevlock, but I think with that year of experience, could be a tremendous final. They've played each other before. They're doubles partners. We'll see how it works out, certainly, when that match gets underway. That'll be coming up first. Following that, we're going to take a look at the men's singles in the Open Championship. We must mention that the Open, just one of many uh, championships that were contested this week here in Houston. We're going to see the unseated Tim Doyle. And if that name sounds familiar, yeah, he's the brother. And uh, what, kind of a, what kind of a man can we expect from Tim Doyle? What kind of play? Well, Tim's a super player. He's a really strong player, strong serve. Unseated is, is uh, kind of different because there's so many good players down here that you may be unseated but still very, very established and should present himself very well in the finals and probably will do very well. It's going to be tough, though, because he's going against Andy Roberts. Not only did Roberts win this thing last year, but... He is experienced. He knows what the finals are all about. Well, he's been here in the past. He's won last year. He looked very strong last year. I've seen him play a little bit this week. He's just as strong, so he's going to be tough to contend with. We'll also be taking a look at a little exhibition of some of the visually impaired players that uh, will show us what they can do on the court as well. You stay with us. We'll get the action underway after we take this time out from the Houston YMCA. Greg Lucas here along with uh, Luke St. Ons, the executive director of the American Amateur Racquetball Association. Luke, what's going on with the organization these days? This has been a real banner year for our sport. We became a full medal sport in the Pan American Games. We became a full medal sport in the uh, Olympic Festival this summer in Oklahoma City. And above all, we became a Group A member within the United States Olympic Committee. This lends our sport the credibility that it needs to take it to every part of the United States. And above all, we're dealing in the mental and physical well-being of our people. And racquetball, as you well know, is a lifetime sport. And we're very, very excited to be a part of these, these tremendous events that will spread the word. Uh, we are interested very much in having people contact us concerning any part of the uh, sport. And they can contact us at 815 North Wetter, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80903. June on Home Sports Entertainment means fun in the sun. Major League Baseball swings into the summer with a great American and National League lineup featuring the Houston Astros and the Texas Rangers. The Astros host the Dodgers, Padres, and Giants in three key Western Division matchups while the Rangers take on Chicago, Oakland, California, Cleveland, and Seattle. In June, HSE debuts the newest sports talk show on cable, Tailgate Party. This audience participation show will feature nationally known sports figures, as well as some not-so-nationally known sports figures. For golfing fans, HSE goes abroad for the Dunhill British Masters from Woburn, England, featuring defending champion Sandy Lyle. We've also got Australian Rules Football, Pro Beach Volleyball, The Pen and Chase, Professional Tennis, The Bing Crosby Celebrity Golf Tournament, and more in June on Home Sports Entertainment, where the game's on us. 
at the downtown YMCA in Houston, Texas. We're just about set to uh, get this match underway. Referee Otto Dietrich uh, going over some uh, instructions with the competitors in this women's singles championship. Michelle Gilman, the number two seed in the tournament, already a member of the national team, taking on Cindy Doyle in the women's singles championship as we pick up the action. Side out to Michelle. jumps back in the middle to Michelle right where she wants it and she hits it a little bit too far to the right on the right wall comes back to Sydney and she drives it back down that right wall Michelle Gilman had a tough semi she had to defeat Kay Coolfield 15, 13, 10, 15, 11 wants. And she had to go into that third game. Cindy Doyle had an easy, relatively easy win over Tony Bevlock, last year's champ, 15, 9, 15, 5. Side out again. Still three serving zero. Look at that last play. That's a shot that a lot of people have started to come up and use very effectively. Cindy comes up and short hops the ball just as the ball passes the dotted line. Hits it into the low zone for two bounces before Michelle can get it. The ball hits some water and skid. Wet ball serve. Called that a skip, so it'll be second serve. It's a point. Three one. one three. Or one serving three is the one is that of now she's closing it down a little bit. Two serving three. Two serving three. Side out. We'll take a break and return. Watch Michelle's on, her, on that backhand. She goes back to the back wall and sets up very nicely and drives the ball across court. Cindy had that loud serve 
to pick off the side wall and it set up Michelle far too easy for that and she kind of side wall pinch spotted that ball for a side out. We have a contact lens problem I think right now. Cindy's got a contact lens problem so she is going to leave the court and have that taken care of. We're even at 3-3 and again She's going to have to take a break. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea if we took one here too because we're gonna have a delay. She is going to go get a mirror to get the contact lens taken care of. We'll take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. Exelon, the most recommended name in racquetball. Do you know how to legally block your opponent? The move would be like this. Right behind, left to the side with a good hit. She's out of the way. Great ball shot. No player in racquetball history has played top-level racquetball so consistently and for so many years as Steve Strandamo. His well-known adult instructional camps have helped thousands of players across the country, and his innovative teaching methods are the standard for all racquetball instruction. For a free brochure, write today to Strandamo Racquetball Academy, Coronado, California. Call 1-900-CAN-I-WIN from a touchstone phone. Answer six sports trivia questions and win 100 bucks. Championship sports trivia, 1-900-CAN-I-WIN. 95 cents per minute based on a four-minute call. Learn pool from the best. Never before have these 16 world champion players been gathered at one time to teach you the art of pool. Learn all the shots from the best players in the world. Breaks, banks, defense, positions, angles, even the masse. 16 pool wizards let you in on their brand of magic. World champion, top-ranked players, like number one in the world, Mike Siegel, Jimmy King James Rempe, Lori John Jones, pretty boy Floyd Mattia, Ava Mattia, and the rest of the best. The most amazing video on pool ever available. You'll learn to shoot like the pros. A once-in-a-lifetime chance to find out what the champs have known for years. Play pool like you've never played before. To order your video of Learn from the Best, call 1-800-262-6600. That's 1-800-262-6600. Or send $24.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Learn from the Best. P.O. Box 2424A, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, 10163. Visa, MasterCard, and American Express accepted. Order now. Call 1-800-262-6600. Contact lens problem taken care of. We're about set to resume action. We're all even at three. Gilman serving. We're ready to resume play. Michelle Gilman serving. First game. Score is three. 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 Four three. Score is four. Serving three. Point goes 5-3. Remember it was 3-0 and Doyle came back to even it. Now Gilman on top 5-3. Short. It's a nice Z serve by Michelle. She comes in, Z serve to the back left corner, looks over her left shoulder. Excellent. Excellent for people to emulate that kind of emotion. Protects the front of her body, 
Still looks over her shoulder to see Cindy hit the ball. Second serve. That was called a screen serve. Couldn't see it, so it's second serve. That's a serve that came off the side wall, and Cindy really didn't have much room, and she kind of snuck it down the right wall, and it uh, might have even been mishit, but it made that front wall bounce twice. Gave her a side out. Skip it so the point makes it four serving four. six. Serving six. Five serving six. There's a little bit of action in the center of the court. Cindy had a down line shot or a pinch. She chose the pinch on the right wall and executed very nicely. Six five. Point seven five. Seven Rally. That killed it. Great pinch in the front left corner. She reverse pinched that ball with Cindy on her left side and pinched it over towards the right wall for two bounces and a, and a point. 8-5. Both the players are getting a little loosened up right now. They're just kind of feeling each other out a little bit. Second serve. Nine five. If you just joined us, we're at the U.S. Open. We got a timeout here called by nice sidewall pinch. Michelle. She created a left up shot in the middle of the court. The ball jumped back into Michelle, and she pinched it left wall front wall away from Cindy. Nine five is the score, and we have a timeout. A timeout to clean the wall. Not really. That's only an extra added feature. <laughs> If you've just joined us, this is the Ectalon United States National Singles Racquetball Championships from Houston, Texas. Brought to you by the American Amateur Racquetball Association. Right now, Michelle has edged out a little bit to a three or four point lead here. She's created some, some good left up shots via some good serves. We'll try to keep the pressure on. She's coming in with that first good low drive serve. skipped or hit the wall. It's 10-5. Yeah. Kind of blocked her out. They're going to replay that one. The ball came by too quickly by the body. Couldn't see it. That ball was left up and Cindy couldn't Michelle wanted to go down the right wall, but it came back too much right by her body. Blocked Cindy's vision to her shot, therefore it was called a hinder. Nine 
Nice kill. That makes it 11-5. Actually, Michelle right now has Cindy flicking and retrieving too many balls. She's not getting enough solid hits on the return, setting up Michelle. Michelle's starting to get comfortable in that in her offensive zone and putting some balls away. Second serve here, but you know, this has to be a little psychological too, Steve. With Cindy her, having never beaten Michelle, but knowing her so well, I mean, they've practiced against each other. Now falling behind 11-5. Actually, it looks like in the rally that Michelle's putting more pace on the ball. That was a nice shot by Cindy, nice reverse pin. But if you compare the velocity of, the, of their shots, Michelle's putting more pace on. Cindy's playing a little tentative right now. She sets up in deep court, pinches a very nice ball using the left wall, front wall. Leaves the ball in front of Michelle on two bounces and sign out. She needs to get back in a run. You'll see what kind of a serve she decides to, to throw in. Side out. Couldn't dig it up, side out. A little tentative in her movement right now. Michelle definitely looks more like the hitter in these rallies. Ball came back and she tried to hit it into the back wall and get it back to the front, but just too tight into the back wall. 11-5. 12 5 point on that. Good serve, it caught the right wall, kind of cracked out for an ace serve. Three points all Gilman needs to win the first game. Now it's two, it's 13 to five. Scores 13, serving five. Could be a real big week for Michelle graduating from high school and possibly winning this championship. Side out. Stays 13 5. 5 serving 13 with uh, Doyle. Scores 5 serving 13. That on the throw to the racket. Side out. I'm sure that serve, she wants that ball to come along the right wall to make it a difficult return. And some of these are popping out and giving Michelle too easy a setup. Point now it's 14 5. Score is 14, serving 5. That will do it. Great the way she slid her body into Cindy and created that down the right wall shot. So the first one goes to Michelle Gilman, 15-5. Here's the... She pushed Cindy over to the left and drove it down the right wall for game point. Very nicely done. Winning game. Well, she took an early lead. Here, you see another Here it is from another angle. Angle. Now she kind of center court shot, but Cindy leaves it up. Has to move way to the left side, down the right wall. Two bounces, point. Game. Game to Michelle Gilman. 15-5. The score after game one. We'll be back with game two. The same two go at it again in just a moment. We're with Linda Mosier, the media director and president of the Women's Council of the American Amateur Racquetball Association. Let's talk a little bit with Linda about the participation of women. It seems to be a, an up-and-coming sport for the ladies, and uh, it's very valuable for them, too. 
That's right. That's right. We're finding that um, more and more women are beginning to incorporate racquetball as part of a total fitness routine that's excellent as an aerobic sport, which burns over 600 calories an hour, and also as a stress and weight management tool. How much more can we grow with the women? Oh, we have we have unlimited growth potential here. We have. Uh, we have a lot of information at our national office. We have representatives in nearly every state who can help women find out where to play and how to learn. Um, if we have, uh, we'd like to go ahead and have people call the national office to get any additional information. And that is in Denver, Colorado. Can you give us the number? Uh, the, the number is 719-635-5396. Team up! Join the Wanty Team! Summertime means playtime, and Home Sports Entertainment has the games for you. The boys of summer are back, and that makes for some exciting summer nights with the Houston Astros and the Texas Rangers. From the field to the fairway, the European PGA Tour comes to America, featuring Seve Ballesteros, Ian Woosnam, and Sandy Lyle. From abroad to down under, HSE has Australian Rules Football. This sport has caught the interest of many an American with its survival of the fittest style of play. Back to the American coast, it's Pro Beach Volleyball. The best beach players in the world compete on all three coasts, California, Florida, and Texas. Special events on HSE give viewers a chance to watch their favorite sports, including high school all-star games boxing, tennis, and more, as HSE has a great summer lineup for you. Well, there's the score of our first game, Gilman over Doyle, 15-5. Some thoughts from Steve Strandamo uh, looking back strategically. Michelle, they both kind of felt each other out in the beginning, and then as they got comfortable, Michelle started to hit out on the ball and has good pace and good accuracy. And Cindy came back seemingly to me very kind of tentative and kind of punching the ball, not very aggressively. Now I would guess that my suggestion would be to her is to come out attacking back in here because Michelle's such a good hitter that you can't just lob serve and hope that she's going to miss shots, especially when she gets in the groove and she feels very comfortable. Also, there's probably a, a psychological advantage here, too, in that if Michelle has beat her five or six times in a row, that's probably starting to take hold here again. One thing I think that helps, I think really helps uh, uh, Michelle is, is she's almost three inches taller, and that, that reach is very important. Okay, we're just about set to start the second one, and serving first will be Cindy Doyle. Second game. See if she comes in hard right off the bat here. You had a statistic, I think, that was interesting in that first game. Yeah, in the first game, it, it's, it really worked to, to Cindy Doyle's disadvantage in that she skipped in. When Michelle was serving, she skipped in eight balls in rallies that gave Michelle eight points, which is more than half the game. Whereas when Michelle skipped in her three shots, it was when she was serving, so she only lost the serve, which is a pretty drastic statistic right there. Made a big difference. Means you're, you're one player in the championship is giving the other player more than half the points, not even earning them. That's way too many. Well, we're trading side outs as we did really when we started the first game before a point was scored. It's hard for the, the gals and guys that hit the ball hard to get that low drive serve in. There are a lot of them are coming in short. That's a nice aggressive return from Cindy. She's got to get back in this thing with more aggressive shots than, than tentative, tentative shots. Good Z serve. Steps right up into that zone. Kills it in the low zone down the left wall. Zero, She's back in the service zero. box. Still zero serving zero. This is Cindy Doyle. appeal the serve she thought it was short they thought the serve 
Referee called it good. She appealed that she thought it was short. As it comes over the line, it does look good right there. And the linesman upheld the referee's ruling, and it's a good serve, side out. It's still zero, serving zero. Much better start for Cindy right here. She looks like she's ready to attack. Both the, these two gals should be able to produce some super rallies. That steps right over there, very aggressive, drives it as Michelle's coming out of the box. Excellent, excellent return. a tough serve for Cindy right now because it's it's basically a pretty mishit serve showing the shot down the right wall got by Cindy that was put in a great spot Side out. serve came off the back wall Cindy said great with her backhand and drove it back down that wall good backhand technique both these gals have excellent forehand and backhand technique to watch and a lot of the replays. Yeah. Got her off the board a little bit here. She served it, got a left up shot, put the next one away. 1-0. One she takes it off the back wall, drives it down the right wall, hits the right, right wall, cracks out, two bounces. They had 1-0. I believe that's the first time it is. It's the first time Doyle has actually been ahead. Good serve. Cracked off the right wall. Landed Outs. right behind the short line. 2 0. Notice if you can see it hit the crack right there. It takes two bounces before Michelle can get a rack and that. Point. 2 0 for Cindy Doyle. Zero. Getting some good pace on her serves right now. Creating another left up shot and puts it away. Man. Four zero. Another good serve down that right wall. Cracks out of the back corner, can't get it. Taking an early commanding lead for Cindy Doyle. That's a great shot. Side out. A little higher than your normal when the ball drops down below your knee. She hit that ball up around her waist, shoulder area, and drove it down the right wall. Tremendous offensive shot. Right there, you see her make contact way up by her shoulder. Drove the ball down the right wall for a side out. Side out. Four serving zero once more is Cindy Doyle, who lost the first game, 15-5, leads this one. You're mentioning about the reach of Michelle. That was great. It showed exactly that reach up in there where she stretched way up with her backhand and drove it back down the left wall. That's a good shot, and it puts uh, Michelle Gilman on the scoreboard here in the second game. One serving four. Well, it was a point for Michelle, but we saw some nice acrobatics from Cindy. She takes this ball and kills it flat out right in front. Good forehand, good technique, 
She drives that elbow and then she gets extension at contact. That's what get, gets both Michelle and Cindy the tremendous power that they can generate. Side out. Side out, rule to skip. See where Michelle and her serve's now trying to jam the ball back around her a little bit back into Cindy's body and actually creating some pretty nice left up shots for herself. Ball. She was going to go to the back wall and try to get that ball, and it was left up off the back wall, too. And she just got a little tangled up with Michelle right there. Couldn't see it right there, and the referee called hinder shot. Replay the, replay the point. Nice pinch off the side wall, went to the back wall, set up very nicely and pinched it using the right wall and then going into the front wall. There she goes, watch Michelle though. The key thing there also is watch Michelle the defender, watch Cindy make contact. That's such an important fundamental that players watching the telecast could pick up on. The other player, defender watching the offensive player make contact with the shot. Five serving two. Man, nice save, and really it's been two different games for Cindy Doyle. She is now up 6-2 as the replay of the last one. Last point she scored. Went and got it. Nice pinch, and then she got it. Great shot for Cindy up and down that left wall. Second serve. Nice pinch shot right there off the left up shot. Four seven, serving two. It's a nice side out right there. It's so difficult for the players. Mention that we're gonna watch the serving motion of Cindy Dale. She lets the ball drop solo, drives her elbow in gets extension, then pulls herself out of the service box and watching Michelle. Oh, nice That's shot. A tough backhand. Side out, 7-2. Side out, the shot comes off the back wall. She chooses not to cut it off, drives it right down the wall. Right down the left wall, there it is again. Good backhand, watch your technique. She drives that shoulder through right down the wall. Four, seven, serving two. That's a point, eight, two. Well, change in momentum here right now. It looks like this, this carries itself through. We could have a tremendous, exciting tiebreaker in this match. And a timeout called by Gilman. 8-2 in favor of Doyle. And we will take a timeout as well, returning into game number two of this uh, women's championship in the open division in just a moment. Exelon, the most recommended name in racquetball. 
Greg Lucas with racquetball expert Steve Strandeball as we are at the AARA Racquetball Championships. The U.S. Open is the women's open division. And you saw the score. Chat again. If you watch Cindy serve, she gets down really low. Now watch her follow the ball out and watch. She sees Michelle make contact with the return. Tremendous. Then goes to the corner to hit her shot. Getting fired up. 9-2 lead. That's right. She lost the first one. 5-15. Side out. Two serving nine. This is Michelle Gilman. Here's the last one. There's a nice shot off the back wall. Michelle's ready to drive the ball cross court. Great angle. Cindy was in good position back in behind the dotted line, but the ball just was too well angled. Michelle Gilman serving from Ontario, Oregon. He holds the racket and up. And wasn't a bit. ready. Wasn't ready. Had the racket up. Do that serve over. Michelle from Ontario, Oregon was the runner up in this tournament a year ago. Oh. That, that almost looked easy. Three serving nine. Here's another good low drive, sir. She gets down really low. You see Cindy step over into the left corner and drive the ball. Just kind of shoved it over. Michelle got the point. Three serving nine. Second serve, that was short. Second serve. Great shot. Side out. Good shot down that wall. Takes two bounces just before the back wall. Michelle couldn't get to it. serving nine. It's the seventh year that the U.S. National Championships have been held here at the Houston downtown. That's a skip. Side out, double fall. He gets our first double fall. Great serve. And it's ten serving three. Low drive down the right. I don't know if we can see it, but it just cracked off right after the solid second line. Cracked out for an ace serve. That was a skip, so it's 11 serving three. Ball hit the floor before it. Make contact with the back wall. Hold it, hold it. Now, a bad bounce off the window up there. We're going to redo it, considering a bad bounce off the window. There's a window on the far end of the court. In fact, one of our cameras is the one you're looking at right now. And if it hits right on the edge, it can take a bad bounce. So they're going to replay it. shot she had her pushed off to the right side just a little bit and took that backhand down the left wall 12 you notice how she three. slides Michelle to the right Michelle's got to get out of the way because if she blocks a straight shot to the front wall it's an avoidable hinder point for Cindy Doyle that's skip boy what a difference the two games have been this is 13 serving three this is so much of a momentum game. Nice shot from Michelle off the back wall. Just aimed that thing a little bit too low and caught the, caught the floor before it hit the front wall. But it is a tremendous momentum game. And once Cindy hit it and gained it this game, she's maintained it all the way through. It looks like she's going to carry it into the tiebreaker.
There's a shot for it right there. That probably could be a point yeah, hinder. Yeah. Point hinder because of the fact that, that Cindy had a very good offensive shot. And because of Michelle's positioning, she couldn't get to that shot right here. So therefore, it took away the offensive shot and was a point hinder. So the point giving goes her the up. point. Yeah, it's 14-3 now, so this is a game point. Skipped it, and that's it. So it's 15 to three. And we're all even. So after... Uh, or does it get... Michelle has some good shots. It's a good get right there. Good offensive setup. Cindy was in good position. She just drove it into the floor. Actually, got very close to the right wall, and it was tough to pick off. So it was a tougher. Once we saw it on the side wall, it was a tougher shot than it looked. She had several skips. Well, stay with us, because coming up next will be the 11-point tiebreaker to determine the champion of the women's singles open division on HSE. Greg Lucas here, along with... Uh, Luke St. Ons, the executive director of the American Amateur Racquetball Association. Luke, what's going on with the organization these days? This has been a real banner year for our sport. We became a full medal sport in the Pan American Games. We became a full medal sport in the uh, Olympic Festival this summer in Oklahoma City. And above all, we became a Group A member within the United States Olympic Committee. This lends our sport the credibility that it needs to take it to every part of the United States. And above all, we're dealing in the mental and physical well-being of our people. And racquetball, as you well know, is a lifetime sport, and we're very, very excited to be a part of these, these tremendous events that will spread the word. Uh, we are interested very much in having people contact us concerning any part of the uh, sport, and they can contact us at 815 North Wetter, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 809-03. Racquetball Singles Championships, the AARA bringing this to you from Houston, Texas, and we're all set for the tiebreaker. As you can see, Michelle Gilman winning the first game, Cindy Doyle the second, some of the action from that first game. That shows that uh, the point hinder. And that's good for, for players to see that they can't take the offense the shot. They have a big responsibility. When a player hits the shot, they've got to get out of the way and give their opponent the rightful offensive shot. When that doesn't happen, it should turn into a point hinder. It's a tough call, and it's, uh, but it's a necessary call to keep the flow of the action going. Could be a good final. They're both strong players. They both got a, a game. Each winning a game, they got it out of their system. They got their bad game, maybe out of their system. And these first few points could be very interesting. Otto Dietrich, the referee, looking on from high atop the court. That's the voice you hear in the background, uh, signaling the calls, making the call signals scoring and we're just about set to go cindy doyle will be serving to uh, start this uh, tiebreaker this is an 11 point tiebreaker now, as we mentioned actually michelle had a tiebreaker yesterday in fact michelle had a tough time getting to the finals because she she had to go 15 13 to beat kay kufeld in the first uh, game and lost 10 15 then took the uh, tiebreaker 11 to 1. and cindy doyle uh, was on a roll beating tony bevelock 59 15 5. Full medal sport in the Pan American Games. That's right, racquetball. In fact, uh, we'll be seeing a Pan American gold medalist in the men's championship, which will be coming up later on. Well, they start fresh. Otto explaining to the crowd exactly the situation. It's an 11 point tiebreaker. Timeouts can be called. off by Michelle. She had Cindy pushed over on the right side and she took it down the left wall very nicely. Let's see what kind of a serve she starts this game off with. Second serve. Second serve. Yeah.
got it. That's a great shot for players to see that when you have your opponent push back in the back left corner, that the rightful shot is to hit the left wall first on a pinch shot. Your opponent's in the back left, pinch the left wall first, away from your opponent. That's a skip, side out. Zero serving one. Zero serving one. That was a great shot. Shot out. Or check that punch. She was already serving. 1-1. One, one. Good serve. That was one of the good serves that she got in there. Pinched that thing so tight out of that right corner. Took one, many bounces one. before it got to Michelle. She also appealed that Michelle did not get the one previous to that and then pinched another one in for a winner. So either way, she was in command of that rally. Remember, these serve. two have been doubles partners for a while, but in singles play, Cindy Doyle in the black has never defeated Michelle Gillen in four or five tournament matches. That's a good shot down the right wall. Side out, we're still at 1-1. One, one. That's a great back wall technique right there by Michelle. Ball dies behind Cindy for a side out. Coming off the back wall again. Boy, that's flat. That is a flat winner. 2-1. Shell's starting to show a little emotion here. This is a great replay right here. Look at that racket set up. Look at that elbow coming down through. That thing is flat on the front wall. Cross-court kill. Michelle's starting to show a little bit of emotion, get fired up. She can sense this, that if she can jump out to this lead and maybe get a four or five point spread on this. That's a great, that's a great swing. She sets up back in here and just nails that thing. She wants more. Michelle had her shot in the middle too, just left it back up again. Side out. One thing to note on the low drive serves is that their target is a replay of Cindy's forehand. Good shot in front of Michelle. They have such a small target to hit on the front wall. That's a great ace. Ooh. They probably have a target to hit on the front wall in the low drive serves. It's only about three or four inches high and about five inches wide. So many of these serves are going to be short. And if they miss a little high, it's going to come off the back wall. Very tough to serve a good low drive serve. That's a great shot there. To get it into the court and then keep it from coming off the back wall. Three now serving two on the side out. It does land right behind the solid line. Good crossover step by Michelle and hits it for a winner. It's four serving two. You know, that's the biggest change, I think, with uh, Michelle from game two. She is. Sets up on this back end, drives the ball. Look at that good straight arm follow through. Gets her whole body into the swing. It's important here that you see these gals, they swing with their body first and their arm second, so therefore they should eliminate arm problems. A lot of racquetball players swing a lot with their arm first, body second, put a big throb on that arm. Second serve. Second serve. out with a two serving four. Sometimes it's not a matter of how well you hit it, but more or less where you hit it. Right now it kind of came off of Cindy's racket, little forehand flick shot. Now you notice it coming up right here, here's where she wins the rally right here, flicks a little bit to the left. Two bounces before Michelle can get it. 
serving for. Shows it again right there. Cindy could have cut the ball off as it went through the middle. Decided to let it come off the back wall. Pinched it left wall, front wall for a point in front of four Michelle. Three, serving four. Three, four. Oh, nice effort. She goes down for it, but that <laughs> ball bounced twice four, in front of her. Three. Four serving three. Again, this is the tiebreaker. Good technique in there. Dies in front of Cindy. She goes for it. Can't quite get it. Score is four. Three. It's a tough call right there because she starts along the left wall. Steps out a little bit to try to give Cindy a little bit of visibility. But that wasn't seen until the ball came by Michelle's body. So therefore had to call it a screen. Perfectly placed, it's five serving three. Right there, she comes up to short hop and has Cindy on the left, drives it right down the right wall. Perfect kill. A lot of times it's not, again, how great you hit shots, but knowing where your opponent is, if you can hit it away from your opponent for two bounces, that's the key. Nope, skipped it. Kind of let up on the time it. to get tentative right now. She played the second game so well. In this kind of a battle, you got to go in there and just keep hitting. Doyle calls four and gets a timeout, trailing 3-6. Quality of play is so good that, especially with Michelle hitting that well, Cindy can hit just as well, that both of them stay in the rally and continue to attack each other. U.S. at a good 1988. Where's it at, and in fact, team positions are up for grabs in this uh, tournament uh, that we have here. Great backhand right there. Right there, Cindy, a little tentative right there. That ball came right back up to her as a left up shot. The short game to 11, six to three. Pretty good spread. Cindy can't let her get a couple more. It just might be out of her reach. Those, these are young ladies, both 18 and 19, respectively. They've been playing for a while. Michelle Gilman has been playing for eight and a half years. She's just 18. Here's a nice shot. And Doyle has been playing since she was seven. Not, never too young. Here's a shot right to their backhand off the back wall. Sets up, nails it. Good shot. Pinch that ball. Left wall, front wall. There was a return. Now we'll see it again back in here. Michelle's in good position, and she's watching her. She comes in. Sidewall pinches that thing. Wants points, needs to get back in there and get some good serves in. Very disgusted now is Cindy. Yeah, she's a little disappointed because she had created the left up shot right flat in the middle of the court, and all she needed to do is pinch it and keep it down in front and couldn't do it. Seven three. You can hear uh, Michelle psyching herself up on the court. Here's a great shot down the right wall. Flat again. Bottom board on the front wall. Bounced many times before it got back into center court. Well, 8-3, so she's three points away. She's trying to keep herself psyched. You see her talking to herself. This is when a good player can close out the game. They've got to, they've got to lead. They're in a championship, and now it's time to get those final three points. And a shot for her. She had it too.
and he hung in there tough though. I mean, at a point in there where she sits there, ball came right back into center court. Nice left up shot and she re-killed it down the left wall. That's exactly what you want to do. She does need a couple points and she's got to close this gap a little bit. Maybe bring it into eight, five, eight, six. There's the big difference. She is in this this tiebreaker. Gilman's not missing, not skipping the ball. When you get to the quality of play like this, is that when you serve a ball off the back wall like this, and you take Michelle, who's got a great forehand, too easy a return. Too many are going to turn into side outs. Not going to make it, and it's nine three. It's great and that Michelle kept Cindy pushed on the left wall the whole time to create that whole open lane down the right shot. Didn't take a great shot down there, she stayed off the back wall and got her point. Second serve. Well, that might be a handy. Now if we're gonna go with the point. It was close, Cindy kind of got caught back in behind her. So she kind of made her move up, and then the ball got by. If she just stayed back a little bit, then she could have probably come in behind Michelle and got to that ball. Well, this is the tiebreaker and match point. Match point championship. Last year, Michelle Gilman was runner up in this tournament. Trying to go one stop better. That's it, she got and it. Does. She got it. So Michelle Played Gilman. Strong. Played very strong match. Gilman wins it by a count of 15-5, 3-15, and the tiebreaker 11-3. So not only did she graduate from high school this week, she wins a national championship. See the replay of this, she comes in, kind of slides, gets caught, kind of gets jammed up. Now she returns it. Left up shot, now she takes it cross court, good back in, gets fired up, she has a championship. Right there again, cross court, ball dies before it jumps back into Cindy's area and championship Michelle Gilman. Well, Tremendous she keeps effort. her record intact. Cindy Doyle still looking for a win over her doubles teammate. We'll be back with some thoughts about this one, the presentations, words down on the court after we pause for these words. There's the final score of Michelle Gilman winning at 15-5, 3-15, 11-3. And let's go down now to the area next to the court where Otto Dietrich will be uh, handling the presentations. We'll also be hearing from the winners and the runner-up a little bit later on. But let's go down to the court. And now Luke St. Ange, the executive director of the American Amateur Racquetball Association, will make the medal presentation. First medal goes to Cindy Doyle from Buffalo, New York. The second place runner-up the U.S. National Singles Championship. Now Mr. St. Ange will make the gold medal presentation to Michelle Gilman from Ontario, Oregon, the U.S. National Singles Champion, the Women's Open Division. Mr. St. Ange is now presenting the sweatshirts to the ladies as emblematic of their membership on the U.S. National Team. be a nice ring to be the women's national champion. Finally. And, and you got your high school diploma this week? Monday. Big, <laughs> a good week for you. Yeah. You started out very strong in the first game. Cindy came back pretty strong in the second game. What was your game plan going into the third game? Into the third game, I knew that I had to keep her serve under control because her serving was what was beating me. I was getting to the serve, but I wasn't doing anything with it. And then I would get shots, and I would leave them up or do something with it that I shouldn't have been. So in the third game, just basically was get her serve, make a good return, and then play the rally like I should have been the second game. You did an excellent job. Congratulations. Thank you. 